Hi there, Matt Wade here, and I'm not usually a news and updates kind of guy, but this week was just a crap ton of feature announcements and releases, and I felt it could be useful to provide filtered rundown of the most important items that will impact your everyday life in Microsoft and Office 365. So let's dive right in. This video is organized by app or service. Scrub below to jump to a different section if you prefer. I'll label which app I'm discussing up here in the top left, and I'll include any reference delivery date up here in the top right. Hint, delivery dates are not Microsoft strong suit, so some of them won't be super specific, but I'm going to use their phrasing, not my own. Also, I found some dates on the roadmap conflicted with others referenced in announcement blogs. I went with the later of the dates. Also if, and that's a big if, if I found a session that included a roadmap slide, I'm including it here with a source. Not all of them did. And if I stumble across more in the future, I'll update the video description with links to those sources. So you might wanna to return to this video for updates as Ignite videos become available after the conference. For generally keeping up to date with progress, you wanna see my video on the sources to follow to stay in the know with Office 365 above. Also, some announcements affect multiple apps. I'll include secondary apps under the primary ones in the top left, just so there's context as we're chatting. Fair warning, this video is a no BS view from my perspective. I'm skipping over the admin tools, some of the features I don't think affect a large majority of users out there, and frankly, any of the more fluffy or more obvious progressions in functionality type ones. But keep in mind that this is just one man's perspective and that your situation might be different. Links to the main sources are in the video description. For a little background, this week was Microsoft Ignite, Microsoft's annual international customer-focused conference. The last few years, it's been held in Orlando, and this year it was supposed to take place in New Orleans. Of course, it was eventually moved to an online event due to COVID. One of the positive results of this is it went from being an incredibly expensive to, uh, event to attend to being entirely free, really leveling the playing field for people worldwide to take part. You can find all the sessions from the conference on demand for free, probably by the time that you're watching this. But you're not here to find out about watching the deep dive sessions, you want the short version. Today I'm going to cover major updates and feature announcements that will impact everyday people when using Microsoft Teams, SharePoint, OneDrive, Yammer, Stream, and Microsoft Search. As a bit of a prologue, for a full listing of everything that was announced, you want to check out the Ignite 2020 Book of News. It's a major improvement over last year's, it's incredibly easy to get around, available in seven machine translated languages, and no kidding, it's 20,000 words long. That's how much was announced this year. First up, let's talk about my favorite area, Microsoft Teams. Meetings got the most love with a bunch of wanted, nay, demanded features being announced. First, meeting capacity will increase to 1,000 attendees. A huge win for me is custom layouts, a further improvement over the dynamic view that was announced, but we still haven't actually seen rolled out. Custom layouts lets you pin and move people to highlight certain presenters while, for example, still showing shared content. One major win here is being able to place a cutout of yourself in front of PowerPoint slides when you're presenting. That said, this feature appears to still be up to the viewer, so if you want to force what everyone sees, you may want to still consider my guidance on showing your video and content together in the card above. Very sneakily included in a breakout session, but mentioned absolutely nowhere else as far as I could tell, is the fact that we're going to get PowerPoint presenter view in the PowerPoint sharing option in Teams. No major details on how it'll work, but it's a market improvement over the status quo. Though I suspect it doesn't get us around continuing to be forced to use PowerPoint online, which means rich features like transitions and animations are choppy when shared via PowerPoint and Teams. So my earlier video on the best ways to present PowerPoint slides in Teams may not be moot quite yet. You can find that up here. Meeting recap will centralize all the key artifacts of your meeting, including meeting recording, transcript, notes, and any attachments. You can also add tabs to it like you can to any channel. Calendar events themselves will get this feature too, making them almost like little teams unto themselves. Well, don't quote me on those words. I'm just using an easy comparison. This one's a big win for keeping everyone organized though. Breakout rooms are rolling out imminently. These let you split up your meeting into smaller groups and are incredibly useful in online classes, corporate events, board meetings with committee breakouts, and organizational retreats with brainstorming breakouts. Some schools actually have early access right now. Keep an eye out for a future how-to video from me on making the most of these. 
probably a good reason to subscribe. If you're not aware, live events in Teams, that other option under scheduling a meeting, lets you host thousands of people for a presentation from one or a few presenters. This is a tool for town halls and notably webinars. And you can do all of this for free in Teams, believe it or not. Well, we're getting a built-in webinar registration system, which is pretty sweet, though the system for registering is going to come at an additional cost. Two last quick meeting ones. Together Mode is getting the ability to change the virtual background with presenters being able to set it for everyone. It'll also do a better job at centering and scaling people to the right size, which is a welcome improvement. More on how to use Together Mode in the video above. And we're getting live reactions in meetings. Not entirely sure who requested this feature. I don't see it on user voice anywhere, though I did find a request for an eye roll reaction in chat. So there's that. Jerry O and a few dozen compatriots doing God's work. Stepping out of meetings, Teams Wonky Talkie is now available, which is big for organizations in retail, construction, and others, uh, where you need instant push to talk communication. It's only available on Android. There's no word on iOS, which is strictly why I mentioned this. On to collaboration, the new info pane on the right side of each channel is out, kind of like the sidebar on Reddit. You'll see the channel description, members, updates, and any pinned posts. So if you try to pin a post and you have no idea why it didn't move to the top of the conversation space, you know, like I did, it's because it's at the bottom of the new pane. Still super useful, just not inherently obvious, at least to me. Click the little information icon in the top right of the channel to see it. I have tenants where pin isn't available yet, don't know why, which is why I mention it even though it's technically available now. The team membership limit is being increased from 5,000 to 25,000 members. I do not envy you folks who have to manage teams that large. Whew. And we're getting the ability to change sharing permissions of files in private chat, which is basically a OneDrive feature brought directly into Teams. This also adds some complexity to permissions. If someone joins the chat, depending on how you share the file, they may not have access. This was announced a while ago, but it was brought up again this week and it's rolling out soon. Teams is getting the Microsoft Search Experience, which should provide a major improvement over the search experience we've been working with in Teams for a while now. It also standardizes what the search look and feel is like across all of Microsoft 365. And Teams is getting the SharePoint Home Experience as a new app, bringing the internet right into Teams. A branded icon can be pinned in the app bar. This is finally answering that very frequently asked question, does Teams replace the internet? Nope. These things are all just part of the modern workplace. As an aside, if you build apps for Teams, be careful. We're starting to run out of space on that app bar. I'm grouping SharePoint and OneDrive together because they're essentially the same thing. That's right, I said it. OneDrive is just a SharePoint library with a different logo and stricter permissions. First up, the SharePoint app bar is a new global navigation experience across SharePoint, giving you access to all your sites, your followed sites, news, and more. If you'll notice, it's building more consistency across M365 with Teams and the new Office homepage, all having app bars as well. The app bar is also available when accessed via the SharePoint app in Teams. New templates and web parts are always a welcome addition, including one we've wanted for a long time, the org chart web part. Fun story, Teams has had a better org chart than SharePoint for years. If you didn't know that, just type slash org in the search bar and type a name. Hopefully we'll see SharePoint compete with this new web part. SharePoint News is getting a number of feature upgrades, including the ability to prioritize what appears at the top of the news feed, news injected into the new app bar, and being able to share news directly to email, Teams, and Yammer. Another cool integration between technologies that M365 already has is the so-called Project Nucleus, which will store a local version of Microsoft Lists and SharePoint Lists on your device using OneDrive Sync. This will let you open, read, sort, filter, and change views offline. If you make edits, they'll be uploaded the next time you reconnect, just like editing an Office file. Lastly is SharePoint Syntex, the first product to come out of the uh, new knowledge network called Project Cortex. Cortex is kind of like a mini Rehoboam from Westworld or Skynet from Terminator, but hopefully less antagonistic. Syntex is a knowledge add-on, yes, you'll have to pay for it, that uses AI to read organization-specific documents and automatically tag content with metadata, improving process and knowledge for process and document-heavy organizations.
OneDrive is getting a slick upgrade to let you move a shared file from OneDrive to a SharePoint library or Teams channel and keep sharing a file with the people who originally had access. Actually, there wasn't a whole lot worth mentioning with OneDrive. Most of it was progressive improvements that we would otherwise expect. Nothing against OneDrive, just nothing major. You can find the OneDrive announcements link in the description for more details, of course. In the community field, Yammer saw some updates too, although after its huge overhaul late last year, it'll be forgiven for them being more polished than groundbreaking. First, you'll be able to upvote responses to questions to help crowdsource answers and knowledge, kind of like Reddit. Top voted answers will display at the top of the thread. You can also convert a post into a question if you should have done that in the first place. Yammer posts are also getting teams like reactions. Though for some reason, they aren't the same reaction options. Teams went with the same ones as Facebook, which made sense to me. Uh, Yammer could have stayed consistent with the same six or even gone with the six that sister Microsoft service LinkedIn uses, but it decided to be different, who knows. Skin tones will be included soon too. There are a whole slew of communicator and community admin updates to Yammer, which you can look up yourself. But I thought it important to point out that Yammer will soon let people post on behalf of others. The biggest use case here is communication staff posting as executives in a company. I wanted to bring this up because I think this changes the Yammer experience for people on a fundamental level. Before, you had to actually take part and be social, you know, like a real human being, to actually show yourself as a leader and executive in Yammer. Moving forward, that's not necessarily the case. So when you see the CEO responding to you or posting in Yammer, know that it may not be. And as far as I know, there's no way to tell from a user perspective. And you deserve to be aware of that degradation and transparency. I know this was a highly requested feature and I totally get why, but man, does it just flip the table for me on the potential authenticity of the entire Yammer experience. Stream, the video service in Office 365, is getting a major overhaul. That makes two huge video service overhauls in only a few years, and the other one, moving from Office 365 video to Stream, isn't even technically done yet. At this point, I found Stream more of a behind the scenes tool. It's what you use for running live events in Teams and Yammer, and it's what records and creates meeting recordings for Teams, and it's responsible for the live captions during Teams meetings. But it's also got a homepage where you can upload videos, comment on them, create channels, and the like. It's basically a scaled down internal YouTube. It even lets you record your own screen and do basic video editing, but not many people know that. So there wasn't a huge reason to go there, but there should be soon. The biggest change is where Stream stores files. Not that it matters to almost any user from a big picture view, but Stream will soon start storing all of its video files in SharePoint and OneDrive. Why that matters to you is because it means sharing videos will be as easy as sharing files in SharePoint and OneDrive. That part is a big win for everyone, especially for sharing meeting recordings in Teams. And yes, this is a move. So that means a migration. There's an entire article about the migration from Stream Classic to the new Stream. Migration can be IT or user-led with a preview of IT migration in quarter two of 2021. There is no Stream Classic retirement date yet, but once you do migrate, old links in Stream Classic will only redirect to the video in the new Stream for one year. The new Stream web app experience will make working with video a lot easier, including doing screen recording, webcam recording, building playlists, and recording podcasts right from the Stream homepage, super easy. All your videos will be listed in a way that's similar to OneDrive. They're really pushing the whole videos are just office documents now concept. You'll get automatic transcripts, speaker attribution, noise suppression, chaptering, and better analytics with the new experience. There's a lot to consider with the stream update, so if you're a heavy user of video, definitely look into the links in sessions covering the stream migration and upgrades. Search has seen a number of gains over the last year or so, and this Ignite is no different. Notably, we're getting a people-centric search, which is basically a way to filter your results to only those related to a specific person in the organization. Back in the day, you could have used the author or editor tags in your search text, but this is a much more user-friendly way to do it. Note that this is not people search. This is like looking for messages and files that involve a specific person, not searching for the person themselves. Another big one is conversation search. You'll soon see Teams, Outlook, and Yammer conversations show up under the conversations tab in your search results. So finally, we have a central results listing for all conversation types and you don't have to jump app to app, which has been annoying. Image search is coming soon, as are improved filters for paring down your results to get to exactly what you're looking for. There are a lot more little ones that you should check out the roadmap for details on too. 
And I know Microsoft will hate to hear this, but it's nice to have Microsoft Search become that much more like the consumer experience we've come to expect with Google. Now, whether your results are as good as a different story, that's something you've got to look into search optimization for. I know, I probably missed a ton of stuff that you're itching to comment on and mention below. Approvals in Teams, pretty cool. More security and compliance benefits from SharePoint syntax, awesome. But like I said, this is just Matt Wade's view on what the big announcements were, and generally I look at things from the everyday user perspective. I was also trying to filter out the stuff that had been announced before. There were a lot of that actually. So this video could be higher value and a bit shorter. Remember, for more detail, check out the Ignite Book of News, the Microsoft 365 Roadmap, and my video on sources to follow to keep up to date with the constant changes in Microsoft and Office 365. So what are some of the announcements you're most excited about? Leave a comment below. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, a like and subscribe is much appreciated. Happy digesting all the news. It's going to take us all a long, long time, but hey, just consider it job security.